There's so much to love about Maine. The people, the places, the food. And we're here to share it all with you. Each week, our team brings you the very best of vacation land. This is Maine Life. Oh, lover, I'll see you there. Waiting in the willows with your autumn hair. Oh, lover, I'll see you there. After many miles. Today, we explore some secret gems in Maine's largest city of Portland. Portland played a big part in the Underground Railroad because it was rail and it was sea. Many people don't know about Burundi. It's a tiny country in Central Africa, but with one of the best coffee on the planet. This is something that we've really sort of poured our heart and soul into. It really is about sharing stories through music and especially the story of Portland because it's such a unique thing that this organ exists. It's just incredible. Maine continues to surprise and inspire me. After living and working in this beautiful state my entire life, I continue to discover new places and meet a lot of hardworking and interesting people. Just one of the reasons I love supporting Maine Life. Each week, it takes us all somewhere new and exciting. Hi, I'm Andrew Silsby, President and CEO of Kennebec Savings Bank. Come into any of our locations and experience the difference. But until then, we hope you enjoy this episode of Maine Life. Thanks for watching. Hi everybody and welcome to this episode of Maine Life. Today we explore some secret gems in Maine's largest city of Portland. Some I've been to and others, well I'm going to learn alongside you. My co-host for the day is my friend Lynn Tillitson who is a true travel ambassador for the greater Portland region. I meet her here in downtown Portland at the Visitor Information Center at Ocean Gateway. In the busy summer months, we've got the cruise ships that are here, lots of visitors coming in for information. But this time of year is also a great time of year to come and find out what is available in the region. The restaurants are open and welcoming. There's amazing art and culture with theater and live music and outdoor recreation right outside these doors. I'm excited today to show you some things that maybe people didn't know about. We're gonna take a deeper dive into some communities and businesses that maybe aren't as well known. So come along for the ride. While this episode focuses on destinations within Portland city limits, the greater Portland region actually encompasses an area from Scarborough to Freeport, including Gorham and Westbrook. This coastal paradise stays vibrant all year long. And with development projects like Westbrook's Rock Row, and the Scarborough Downs, there's always something new to discover. Our first stop today offers a glimpse into Portland's history with Lisa Jones of Black Travel Maine. Black Travel Maine is a custom curated tour company that specializes in tours exposing the black history and culture of Maine. There's so much to our tours. It's about music, it's about fun, it's about fellowship, and it's about bringing people together of all diversities and all different backgrounds. This is the Abyssinian Meeting House they're in the middle of restoring it now, and it's the third oldest standing African-American church in the country, and it's in Maine. Portland played a big part in the Underground Railroad because of it was rail and it was sea, and a lot of the meetings took place right here. So, you know, when you walk into this building, you feel it. So that was the Abyssinian Meeting House, ladies, and now we're going to take a walk on the Freedom Trail. And there are 13 markers that commemorate the over 200 houses and churches that house the enslaved en route to freedom in Canada. Wow. As I you know, walk the Freedom Trail, I often say to myself, Maine was the last stop to freedom. So when they got to Maine, they, imagine what it must have felt like for them. Thank you for sharing all of this with us and for doing what you're doing. You offer such great tours and they're fun. Been to some of the events, they're fun, informative. We have a great time. So if anyone is a visitor or a resident and wants to join Lisa's tours, Black Travel Maine, please do so. We're so excited to have her. You're a gem for this state. Thank you, and you ladies have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. So let's warm up yeah. and get a cup of coffee. Let's do it. See Bye. Ya. Thank you. <laughs> Along St. John Street in Portland, you'll find Burundi Star Coffee and owners Jocelyn and Andre. Beyond honoring the culture and coffee of their homeland, these entrepreneurs are dedicated to directly supporting the Burundi farming community. I went to school because of coffee. I was a daughter of coffee farmer and 
His mom was also involved in coffee, so we know how it was important for most Burundian families. Many people don't know about Burundi. It's a tiny country in Central Africa, but with one of the best coffee on the planet, and we go back and pay fair prices to you know, people who are growing the coffee. That's helping so many people, but not, not enough. We still have you know, a long way to go. From where you see the red cherries behind you to get in the cup, it takes a lot of steps. So that lady over there doesn't get that much, but she deserves more. When we first moved here to Maine as a asylum seeker, we got so much support. And then when we opened during the pandemic, we saw again the community support. Portland community is it's a good community. I'm going to say that. And hopefully more people come and support because it's not just us, just Burundi Star Coffee, but it goes beyond to Burundi, where people need more than we do over here in, in Maine and America. I went to Burundi last August with Andre and Jocelyn, and uh, we went to their family coffee farms, which they're uh, replanting 10,000 trees on to try and support the local people. And I think that should be supported. And uh, anyway, come in, get a cup of coffee here, go to Africa with Andre and Jocelyn, plant your own coffee tree, it'd all be good. Thank you so much for having us. You and Andre have been a great addition to our community. So good. And I have constantly raved about this avocado toast, so you have yeah. to try it. I've told everybody about it. Our guest is Stella Hernandez with the Immigrant Welcome Center. Tell us a little bit about the community that is emerging in Portland and has been emerging for a while. In terms of the scale or the number of businesses owned by immigrants in the state, it's just shy of 2,400 or so, generating somewhere in the neighborhood of $48 million in revenues a year, employing about 15,000 people. Wow. So it's um, an important part of Portland's and Maine's economic community and future. The Greater Portland Immigrant Welcome Center has many programs. One of them is our business hub, and that's how I have gotten to meet so many wonderful business owners in the community, and Jocelyn was one of the first people I met, and we try and give them the help they need to write a business plan or find their first business loan or line of credit. Anything that contributes to the health of their business is Cheers to your success um, and to a great day. Cheers. 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 At Verlin City, we give drivers a worry-free guarantee on service. That means no surprises when your vehicle needs maintenance. And with our complete vehicle care, every tire purchased is expertly installed by our ASE certified technicians and includes free tire rotations for the life of the tire. And with two years of complimentary road hazard coverage, you'll have peace of mind for miles down the road. That's our worry-free guarantee. Verlin City. Greater Portland's art scene is alive and thriving year-round. The region is a haven for nationally touring acts, world-class performing arts, and rotating exhibits that bring the community together in beautiful spaces like Merrill Auditorium. Welcome, this is Merrill Auditorium, the City of Portland's Municipal Theater. It has 1,908 seats. It welcomes over 125,000 guests a year. It's home to our prime tenants, the Portland Symphony Orchestra, Portland Ovations, and Friends of the Kachmar Organ. We have everything from dance to comedy, music. We have tremendous holiday programming. We do Main State Ballet, Portland Ballet, Portland Opera, so very busy. Merrill's extremely important to the community. It draws people in from all over, especially the Kachmar Organ, which is truly unique. 
We're one of two municipal uh, organs in the country. Having the Kachmar organ here at Merrill and in Portland is really a treasure because it is a world-class instrument, uh, both in terms of the size and its grandeur and what it's capable of, and it allows us to invite world-class musicians here to Portland to perform, such as Mr. James Kennerly, who is our municipal organist. It truly is one of a kind. Well, we are here at the console of the pipe organ. I think of this like the cockpit of a Concorde or a 747. I have all these keyboards that I play with my fingers. We have five of them. And then I have some feet pedals that I play with my shoes, which is why I have these silly little shoes with a big heel and like a very soft sole, kind of like dancing shoes and fun lobster socks because we're in Maine. Yeah, I love <laughs> <laughs> and so when I want to play the organ, I have to pull out some of these white things to my left and right. We call these stops. And if I want to pull out a lot of them, then I can make a lot of sounds. And so that's what makes the organ oh so special. Gosh. You can basically play any piece of music. But the coolest thing about the organ are these um, foot pedals. So I can play stuff with my feet. So you want to make sure that you have really good coordination if you're going to play the pipe organ. And this organ is really unusual because it's not in a church setting, it's not in a religious setting. It's designed to entertain people. So we have what we call our toy stops. We have things like a xylophone. And we have a glockenspiel. The organ does nothing if you don't play it and play it to people. So it really is about connecting with people. It's about sharing stories through music and especially the story of Portland because it's such a unique thing that this organ exists and that it was maintained and it's in an amazing shape. It was built in 1912 and since then thousands of people came every year because this was it. There was no cinema, there was no radio, there was no TV, there was no Netflix, there was no social media. So this is where people came to get entertained. They hang out here, they laughed here, they cried here. And that's what we're sort of reinventing now in the 21st century. <laughs> so this organ really has it all. And all these sounds come from over 100 years ago. So are you going to show us the behind the scenes? Yeah. What we're going to do is actually go inside um, the organ and your mind is going to be totally blown. So we're going right behind what we call the facade. And then this is where all of the, the pipes are. There are 7,101, and they range from these tiny little things. In fact, this is definitely not the smallest, but you can see it's basically like a whistle. I probably shouldn't, but <laughs> no one's watching. <laughs> um, the bigger the pipes, the lower the, the pitch, and the shorter the pipe, the higher the pitch. Some of the pipes are made out of wood. Oh, my. And everything you see here is over 100 years old. This was all built in 1912 by the Austin Pipe Organ Company. It's an antique. So here we are inside the what we call the wind chest of the pipe organ. So all the pipes that we just saw, they're right on top of us. And this is where really all of the, the behind the scenes magic happens. So when I play notes on the keyboard on the console, they come in through um, one of these Cat5 cables. But once it comes in, it translates it back to 1912 technology. So all of these cool little contraptions you can see. These are all controlled essentially by uh, air pressure and everything is handmade and is one of a kind. This pipe organ does not exist anywhere else in the world because it was built for this space. It was built for Merrill Auditorium and there's only one Merrill Auditorium. What would happen if you start playing and someone's in here? You will feel a little bit of ear pressure, but it'll go in two seconds. Do you want to try it? On my head. You can. <laughs> So they wanted to be in there when I turned the organ okay. on. Oh, oh my God. I think you just, oh, I feel it. Do you feel it? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. 
to experience the Kochmar, the best way to do that is to either attend one of our concerts, which range from children's programs to holiday programs to Bach, or you can attend one of our backstage pipe tours, which is free and allows you to go up into the organ and see all of the 7,101 pipes. The organ is like the ultimate entertainment machine. It's just incredible. For over 153 years, Kennebec Savings Bank has been a community bank for everyone. Whether it's providing convenient account access, quick and easy loan process, or supporting the community, our goal is to create lasting relationships rooted in trust and respect. It's always been about integrity and doing what's right for the customer and our communities. I'm Andrew Silsby and I invite you to come into a Kennebec Savings Bank location and experience the difference. Fresh snow, crisp air, energizing, invigorating, time together. Sharing, <laughs> laughter, joy. Plan your trip at visitmaine.com. Hi, Main Life. It's Bob from the Kittery Trading Post. Hi, Bob. Hi, Aaron. Good to be back. How are you guys? We're having a great winter, offering everything you need for the great outdoors. This winter, the Main Life crew is out skiing, snowshoeing, snowmobiling, and hopefully ice fishing, outfitted and ready to go thanks to you guys. But for those of you who choose to leave the cold, the sunshine elsewhere, we've got you covered. Check out our website for upcoming events and great deals. Happy, Happy adventuring! adventuring. At Poland Spring, we've called Maine home since 1845 and are proud to be part of the community. Over the past two decades, investing more than $12 million in the place that we call home. Poland Spring, 100% natural spring water. When you have a history of greatness, you keep dreaming and go beyond what's possible. The new 2024 Ridgeline Passport and Pilot, part of our most rugged trail sport lineup yet. From Honda, Portland, Maine is well established as a world-class culinary destination. Downtown, you'll find everything from fresh seafood and craft cocktails to gourmet, specialty donuts, and authentic Italian gelato. But there's so much to discover off the beaten path as well. Our next stop takes us to Industrial Way, an up-and-coming neighborhood and home to Foundation Brewing and Pizza. The first winter I lived in Maine, I needed something to do, so I started brewing beer after my a uh, friend showed me how to do it, and I met John at a homebrew club. It was uh, invigorating being around all those ideas and really encouraged me and encouraged other people to try new things. Both of us were looking for, I think, something a little bit maybe different than what other people were trying to do. Uh, at that point in time, it was kind of how big, how strong, how many hops can I stick into this beer? But both of us were at this point in our lives where we wanted a ton of flavor and we wanted something that was really tasty, but was also lower alcohol. That's sort of where we clicked. We opened 10 years ago in this neighborhood. There were three breweries in this building all starting up within six months of each other. And it has grown far beyond our expectations. I think we were at the very beginning of sort of tasting room culture, people really connecting with local breweries as really part of their, you know, fabric of their community. It's been a pretty, pretty awesome ride. A little over a year and a half ago, we built out a kitchen and I grew up in Michigan, uh, actually just outside Detroit, and there's a specific Detroit style pizza. And growing up as a, as a kid, my wife Tina and I always referred to it as you want to go get round pizza or you want to go get square pizza because there are different pizza joints that do it different ways. So Detroit style is a square pizza and during the pandemic I was doing a lot of baking at home so we brought that recipe for Detroit style pizza, uh, really developed it, figured out how to make it work on uh, our commercial scale and uh, yeah that's, what, that's the focus of what we do here. This is something that we've really sort of poured our heart and soul into and seeing how much craft beer has become such an important part of Maine, it's been phenomenal to be part of that. 
So this is Epiphany. It is our uh, New England double IPA. It's eight percent. It's our bestseller flagship. It is beer. great. Okay. Yep. Good. And for you, Miss Misses. This one is our Amber Lager. I, that's its name, Amber Lager. It is a Czech style Amber Lager. It has continental hops, Czech saws hops. It's got a really nice um, herbaceous, spicy character, mm. um, but it's a lager, so it's really crisp and clean, and but a little darker. The color, the name comes from the color. Uh, that comes from the darker malts that are used when we make it. I obviously needed the bigger glass. <laughs> <laughs> you knew she was coming. Congratulations, Thank truly. You. What a great Thank year for you. you. We're now back in the heart of downtown Portland, where the Pandora winter lights add a touch of magic to your souvenir shopping or dining experience. Tonight, for our final stop, we'll be cozying up in a fire and ice igloo at the Portland Harbor Hotel. The Portland Harbor Hotel is located in the heart of Portland. Restaurants, breweries, the museums, everything is right here. The hotel itself is consisted of about 103 rooms, with uh, 22 of those being suites. We have some connecting options. We also have three different function spaces, and we also have our amazing restaurant, Harbor Bistro in Terrace, where we have igloos. So now we get to dine outside all the time, which is pretty cool. Hi everybody, and Aaron, welcome to the Harbor Bistro in Terrace. My name is Trent Seib, I am the executive chef, and we hope you enjoy your time with us. We'll have a couple cocktails and try the chowder. Being originally from California, I realized when I got to Maine seven years ago that I had never had real chowder. And I'm very proud of the fact that I mentioned a chowder book because you'd never expect it from the California kid. The book is called Chowder Rules. It is a children's book, but it's about the war between New England clam chowder and Manhattan clam chowder. And I linked up with the author, Anna, and she had some ingredients that she had found in a library in the back section and it had no procedure, so she came seeking out a chef to teach her some procedure and instructions, if you would. And we worked together and it came into fruition and it's a hit. Ooh, All righty. I can smell the chowder, so chef. chowder oh, for you guys. Amazing. So this yeah. is the chowder we serve here in the Harbor Bistro and Terrace. It is in fact the same recipe that is in the back of the book. And Aaron, we signed a copy, the author and myself, for you to take home for oh, your son. That is so nice. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. I really appreciate Our pleasure. that. Our very pleasure. kind. It was Thank a you pleasure. so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our friend tonight for Chowder in the Igloo is Carrie with Portland Downtown. <laughs> Carrie, thanks for joining us. Oh, so glad to be here. Thanks yeah. for having us. This is my favorite time of year. You know, this is the time when it's for the locals. And if folks want to come down, this is when they can live like a local. Mm -hmm. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. Everything is open all year long. You can see those incredible cobblestone streets. We've got some extraordinary parks and, and just some incredible local businesses, art, breweries, all sorts of incredible stuff. Cheers, you guys. This has been such a fantastic day. A little off the beaten path discoveries, which I love about Maine life and some new friends along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Lynn. So much. Thank you for joining us today on this Main Life episode. We challenge you to come to Portland, experience something new, dig a little deeper, go see the Kochmar organ, amazing. Amazing. Have a fabulous coffee with Burundi and so walk sweet. the streets to see the Pandora lights. We are open year round and can't wait to host you. Yay. Thank you so much, Thank my co-host. You can yeah, come back anytime. Time. Same with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can too. <laughs>
We're open and welcome. <laughs> <laughs>